Okay, I uh, got another problem here with the Ranger. Only this one's a whole lot simpler than what I've been having. And uh, the starter apparently has gone bad on me. Um, if you look here, you can see. I saw where someone was hitting this with a hammer um, to get it going and I thought because it was starting so good that they had replaced the starter already but um, that apparently is not the case okay a uh, little tip here um, and if your starter goes out let's say you're out in the woods um, and your starter ain't working. If you have something to tap on your starter with, sometimes that'll get it to work. You know, sometimes you can just tap on it and it'll start. But sometimes you gotta actually turn the ignition key while you're tapping. And that can get you out of the woods. Okay, um, you just saw there as I tapped on it and held the ignition on, it did start. Um, I have tested the power all the way to the starter and uh, it, it's the starter that's, that's bad. I used a voltmeter there and I got, I got 12 volts. The starter is down in there you see the positive cable that's on there. The negative cable is actually on one of the mounts. And there's, there's the starter right there. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this breather for the clutch out of the way. Should give me plenty of room to get this out. Here's the new starter. It's actually probably the same one I stuck in the in our uh, 2000 um, Sportsman 500. So I'm gonna get to it here. The okay, first thing you do is uh, get a quarter inch little rat, uh, socket, and I'm going to uh, take this breather off. for the clutch. Just wiggle and wiggle and wiggle and you'll get it out. Now I should have plenty of room to actually get this starter out. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and disconnect my battery. And uh, it's 10 millimeter. Okay, I just disconnected the positive cable off the starter. That's why I used a 10 millimeter gear wrench to do that. And I'm going to use the same 10 millimeter and try to get these mounting bolts off. Okay, just like on the Sportsman here. Um, that first mounting bolt right there is pretty easy to get off. That second mounting bolt right there, that's that's that, that's a real pain there. Um, just gonna have to keep working at it till it comes off. Getting it back on is gonna be fun too. Um, the ideal thing here would be to pull that clutch cover off. But wow, that's a lot of work. I'm gonna just try to keep working at it and uh, hopefully I'll get her here. Okay, it took a little bit of time but eventually got that bolt loose down there and now I'm gonna I'm not gonna take it out because there's no way you're gonna get it out right there. I gotta, you gotta pry the starter back out of the housing 
and that, that bolt's gonna have to come out with the starter so and I'll have to go back in the same way too okay you can see that there's an o-ring on this starter so what I'm gonna do here is very gently I got a screwdriver here and I'm very very gently here going to pry this out be careful with this because everything here is aluminum so it should be ready to come out now okay now I just gotta wiggle Wiggle it, wiggle it, and wiggle it until she comes out. That's about all you can do. Okay, after a few minutes of, of twisting and finagling here. I think she's ready to come out. There she is. Now, what I ended up having to do is it sits in the thing like this. Had to pull it out away from the gear from the starter bendix in there and I had to rotate this and I had to get it off that way because there's, it wasn't going to go with that bolt in there. Okay now what I like to do before I install something always is to compare the new and the old part. You know give a visual here Make sure everything's the same length, everything looks the same, and uh, sometimes that just a quick look at the old and new part can save you a lot of time of uh, maybe putting in the wrong part because it happens that people do send you the wrong part. This one looks good, ready to go back in. Okay, I'm not going to be able to give you a visual of this going in. It's just too tight of quarters and you'll never be able to see anything anyway but I got the new starter here I'm gonna put this bottom bolt in and like I said before I had to twist it to get it out so I'm gonna have to stick it in like this and then twist it around before I engage the bendix and uh, this is gonna take it's gonna take a little finesse to uh, get this back in so just take your time and don't get frustrated and uh, you can do this without taking too many things off okay finally after working and spinning and working and spinning and finally getting this thing in here um, I got the bottom bolt in. I pretty much had to take both hands down here and, and screw it in. Screw it in the best I could. Um, I've got uh, negative cable hooked back up to the other mounting bolt. Tightening them down right now. Then I'm going to do hook up the positive cable and uh, should be ready to start again after I put uh, the clutch intake back on. Well, everything's back together. Fire up. She spins it over now. The other starter definitely was weak. So that's a new starter and a, a 2002 Series 10 uh, Polaris Ranger. Um, not what I call a difficult job, but uh, you better bring your patience to get that starter in and out. So um, I think anybody could be able to, should be able to tackle that job. 
Um, the old starter, after hearing this one, definitely was weak. And then with the, the marks from, from someone hitting it with a hammer, uh, the, other, the previous owner, another thing he didn't, he uh, forgot to tell me about, I guess. But I got a new starter now, and uh, this job's done.